What happens to donated blood? When a person donates blood with the American Red Cross, it goes through a series of steps before it's ready to help patients in need. But what exactly does the blood journey look like? Let's watch. Step 1. The Donation First, when you arrive for your blood donation appointment, you will start with a questionnaire. Or, you may complete that in advance and arrive with your rapid pass. Then, Red Cross staff will conduct a mini-physical, measuring your pulse, blood pressure, and hemoglobin level. If you are healthy and able to donate, we will collect about a pint of blood, plus a few test tubes for testing purposes. A whole blood donation takes about an hour from start to finish, but the actual drawing of blood takes only 8 to 10 minutes. After the donation, your blood will be placed on ice before traveling to a Red Cross processing center. Step 2. Processing At our processing center, information about your donation will be scanned into a computer database. Most blood donations are spun in centrifuges to separate them into three transfusable components, red cells, platelets, and plasma. Step 3. Testing Meanwhile, the test tubes with your blood samples will have arrived at a testing laboratory. Here, a dozen tests are performed to determine your blood type and check for infectious diseases. Within 24 hours, these results will be electronically transferred to the processing center. If a test result is positive, you will be notified and your donation will be discarded. Step 4. Storage Once testing is complete and your donation is approved for use, it will be labeled and stored. Different components are stored in different ways and for different lengths of time. Red cells are stored in refrigerators for up to 42 days. Platelets are stored at room temperature for up to 5 days, while continuously agitated to prevent platelets from clumping together. Plasma is stored in freezers for as long as a year. Step 5. Distribution Now that your donation is ready to be shipped, it can be sent at a moment's notice to hospitals at any time of day, any day of the week. Hospitals do keep some blood products on their shelves, but it needs to be constantly replenished as it is used. The Red Cross is on standby in case they need more or during large-scale emergencies. Step 6. Transfusion Once at the hospital, how does your blood donation reach a patient in need? People need blood transfusions for a variety of reasons, from serious injuries to childbirth emergencies to cancer treatments. If a patient requires a blood transfusion, the doctor must first determine what type of transfusion. Patients suffering from anemia or blood loss may receive red blood cells to increase their hemoglobin and iron levels. Those unable to make enough platelets due to illness or chemotherapy may receive platelet transfusions. And patients with liver failure, severe infections, and serious burns may receive plasma transfusions as a part of their treatment. As you can see, a life-saving blood donation starts with a generous donor, travels through expert testing and processing, and is distributed through a dedicated team of professionals who provide it to a person in need. Start your own blood donation journey and help save a life by making an appointment today at redcrossblood.org.